Hey guys, what's up? My name is Ines. I write kissing books, and today I'm actually not having a breakdown. Instead, I have a gift for you. Want to unwrap it? Let's break it down. In celebration of my new courses, Writing Sweet and Writing Dirty, I made a worksheet. Can you tell that I was a professor for nearly two decades? Go to the show notes or come to nestwrites.com forward slash breakdown to grab your copy of Give Me a Beat, the worksheet. My Give Me a Beat worksheet will help you to craft your next amazing story, but let me show you how to use it. The worksheet starts off with the setup. Remember, the purpose of the setup is to quickly establish everything the audience or reader needs to know in order to step into the ordinary world of the main character or characters. But at the same time, you want to hook the audience by showing them the extraordinary situation and or qualities of the hero or heroine. In the setup, you should also show the want or the need of the hero. Remember, the want is a false goal and the need is the true goal that will make them W-H-O-L-E whole. I like to list the necessary steps in order to make a goal a reality, at least in the protagonist's eye. This is their plan, and their initial plan is not going to work out the way that they thought it would. But you, as the author, you need a roadmap. So what's the initial plan made by your main character or characters? Next up is the disturbance. The disturbance is different from an obstacle, as it's the thing that upsets the ordinary world. You have a heroine in line for a promotion, maybe, while the boss decided to hire his handsome nephew instead. That's a disturbance. Or maybe the hero is about to move forward in an unwanted marriage of convenience. But what if he gets thrown forward in time before he can complete that? Another example of a disturbance could be that the heroine wants to date the hot billionaire who's speaking at her college graduation. Well, what if that hot speaker turns out to be a sexual dominant and she's a virgin? Next on the beat sheet, we've got the adhesion point. There are three parts to the adhesion point. There's the neat cute, the adhesion, and then the no way. As romance novelists, we all know what the meet cute is all about, right? It's when the hero and heroine have their first encounter on the page or on the screen. We're instructed to make this meeting memorable, thus it being cute. For the adhesion, remember my first language is romance. If this is a love story, the hero and the heroine have to spend a good portion of their time together in order to fall in love. What is the point in the story that thrusts the hero and the heroine together so that they can escape each other for the next couple thousand pages? Hallmark excels at this. Just read through their television guide lists and you're going to get a ton of ideas for how to adhere two people together. Maybe the heroine is working on her family ranch and the hero comes to town but he's an evil developer who wants to buy the land and turn it into a theme park or mall and they're going to have to work together to come to some sort of solution where they both can get what they want. Maybe they have to work together to save the town's beloved bake shop. Or maybe they have to stay up all night to decorate the Christmas tree in order to save the town. Seriously, all plots of Hallmark movies. <laughs> With the no way beat, it proves that however you adhere them, it's not going to be easy. The hero and the heroine, they have to resist the attempts for, to get them together. More often than not in a romance, the first obstacle that they face is typically an antagonistic force. And that antagonistic force is almost always each other. I'm willing to bet that as the hero and the heroine begin to make their plan, they're going to be the ones to get in each other's way in your story. Look to the tropes. Enemies to lovers, they hate each other. Marriage of convenience, they'll get married, but they will not fall in love. Paranormal romance, she's a human and can't make it in the pack because she'll die. He's a vampire and he's long lived and she's going to die. <laughs> Historical, well, he's the Duke and she's low born or poor and he has to make a financial match. All reasons for no way is this romance going to work out. Next, we come to the obstacles in the beat sheet. In Act 2, it's all about the confrontations. Your heroes will try to solve their problem or try to achieve their goal. But with each step forward, they're going to meet with a complication that either sets them back or it's going to force them to figure out a new plan of attack to get them to move forward where they're probably going to face an even bigger problem. Remember, there's four types of obstacles, physical, antagonistic, inner psychological and mystical or acts of God. A physical obstruction could be a car breaking down or maybe they don't have the supplies that they need to move forward. Or perhaps it's an inner or psychological problem where the hero is the heroine's best friend and he doesn't believe he's good enough for her or vice versa. Maybe it's a mystical obstruction or an act of God like when Ebenezer Scrooge gets visited by the ghosts of Christmas past. But if it's a Hallmark movie, it's likely Candace Cameron stepping into the shoes of her past to relive past wrongs. 
yep, that's a real Hallmark movie. When I'm plotting a story, I like to give myself options. I like to brainstorm a number of obstacles that could happen in each category so that I can pull from them as I'm writing. Next up on the beat sheet is the reflection beat. We're closing in on the third act. One or both of the heroes should take a good look at their circumstances and come to a realization of what they truly want or who they truly want to be. This is the reflection beat. Oftentimes, you might even have the hero or heroine looking directly into a mirror or some reflective surface and realize that the person that they are in this moment is not who they truly want to be. Or they may look around at their location and realize this place is not where they want to be. They might look at the boyfriend or the fiance that they began the love story with and realize this is not the person they want to be with. What do your heroes see when they look in the mirror at this point in the story? Which brings us to the resolution beat. The resolution is comprised of three parts. You have the black moment, the wake up, and the grand gesture. In the black moment, once your hero and heroine look at their reflection and know who they truly want to be or where they truly want to be or who they truly want to be with, that's when the lights go out. The black moment is a scene of the greatest battle if you were coming face to face with Freddy or Jason, this is when they rise up from that last bludgeoning over the head that your characters gave them. In a Hallmark movie, this is when the long lost fiance wakes from a coma or comes down from the big city and throws a wrench in the plans of our hero and our heroine. For many romance authors, this is the breakup scene, but it doesn't have to be a temporary parting of ways. I do believe that there has to be a test of the relationship. I believe that you should poke them hard enough to make the readers doubt that the couple is gonna make it out of this book together. But that can be an outside force that's pushing at the two of them while they're holding on to each other. They don't necessarily have to be apart. It's entirely up to you. Which brings us to the wake up moment, AKA the silver lining. This is a scene of revelation. The dark night of the soul has passed and your heroes are on the other side of the battle. This is that moment when one or both of them will realize they made the wrong choice back in the black moment. This moment is either an epiphany or a revelation. In epiphany, the character comes to understand a point that they hadn't before and their eyes open to a new silver light. Whereas a revelation is a communication of information. It's often something that wasn't disclosed before. One happens in the mind, the other happens in the ears. Either way, the character is changed and they will move differently from now into the end of the story. Which brings us to our final beat in a romance, which is the grand gesture. The last scene of this great romance, the moment right before the Hallmark kiss, this is what the grand gesture is all about. And it's usually performed by the character who's changed the most or who's lost the most. But honestly, I always make it the guy because it's just more satisfying when the guy is the one on his bended knee apologizing. In your book, who performs the grand gesture? What is the grand gesture? And one of my favorite things is making the grand gesture a reference to something that happened earlier. Oh, but wait, there's one last thing that you need to do. You wanna make them kiss at least one more time. We've talked before that kissing means a lot of different things. If you're sweet, maybe you take them around to first base. If you're steamy, go on and hit a home run. Once you have this beat sheet filled out, you'll be on your way to writing an epically emotional and satisfying romance. My new courses, Writing Sweet and Writing Dirty, are now open. You can find out more about each course at aneswrites.com forward slash writing sweet or aneswrites.com forward slash writing dirty. If you want a more in-depth exploration of pacing, you should try out my Patient for Pacing course, How to Write a Binge-Worthy Novel in 21 Days, at aneswrites.com forward slash PTP for Patient or Pacing. In the meantime, you guys, you go and you get them words, whether they be sweet or dirty. And me, I'll try to keep it together until the next time that we break it down. I'll see you then. Bye.